Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Scott Schilling Speaks. I'm your host, Scott Schilling. Uh, this is going to be a really informative show uh, talking about something that, quite frankly, each and every one of us should be pretty interested in, our own wellness. And uh, longtime friend, uh, CEO of Data Connect, CEO of Emergent Wellness, my friend Tim Hobbs. Tim, thanks for joining us here. Thank you very much for having me, Scott. Well, tell everybody a little bit about what Emergent Wellness is. Emergent Wellness, simply put, is a place for people to go and see what's available to them in the multiple aspects of their life, uh, especially in their well-being. So uh, for us, wellness goes way beyond just your health. It goes along with um, things like finance, relationships, who you are in the community. Uh, one of the things that's our biggest obstacle uh, in America, one of the leading causes of death is stress. You know, what's causing that stress? Who are we? What are we doing? What is uh, important to us to live in our life? So what does a life well lived look like? And how do we bring the practitioners in there to work with the people to attain a full life? I, I think it's, um, it's such a, a great opportunity to help people live and play full out. You know, so many people are, are uh, some people actually love their work. That's good. Uh, but so many others don't. And then they don't really understand the, the ability to balance or even have a, a team of people around you that can, you know, lift you up or give you the answers when you need it. That's really what emergent wellness is, is putting together uh, and launching, correct? It is. And it's even letting people reflect and look at, we all have a community around us, whether we realize it or not. If we're a business, our vendors want us to do better because they want us to buy more. Our clients want us to have more to offer. If we're an individual, um, who we are in our family, if our family doesn't serve us an extended family, what do we want to co-create? But our environment determines much about what we see in the world. Uh, the world of epigenetics is a fascinating one for me. Where have we come from and where are we going and how does that influence our lives? And it's very rare that a person gets to sit down and really have a conversation about what are life influences in my, in my world? How do I change that? What is it that I would like to be? Uh, what's my legacy want to be? You know, the questions that should be kind of everyday important questions in people's lives, we tend to get lost in our day-to-day, -day, how to make a paycheck or what I have to do to get my kids to soccer practice or whatever that is. Yeah, I think, uh, again, the as you and I have been talking about putting together these wellness teams, as you said, we, we each, to a certain extent, have identified that. Some are a little deeper in that than others, right? But we we tend to have a doctor and a dentist and maybe a chiropractor or massage therapist. So who is emergent wellness for? Oh, wow. Well, it's for, in a way, everybody. Uh, that's a, a blanket statement and that would get eye rolls. So specifically where we focus our time is in really helping improve the businesses that are in the practice of helping people in their well-being. So in other words, we find people that have been doing this for a long time and how do we help them collaborate and do more of that. But because of that, we have an audience of uh, business advisors that advise those practitioners and help them. We have the people in communities that say, well, I can't afford to see a coach every day or um, uh, see a doctor every day or whatever. So what community do I want to build that supports me in doing that? And what kind of advisors do I want to have in the aspects of my life? So if they go to the website, the Emergent Wellness website, the, there's uh, access to a community that's kind of a invitation only community. What kind of things are they interested in? What do they want to create? What are the one or two things they'd like to work on in their life? Uh, in that area. Our job is to make sure that we have qualified practitioners there in different arenas of life or help people who just want to create communities. Maybe it's a vegetarian cooking class or it's a hiking group or whatever it is that uh, 
what do you do around finance and how do you create peer groups around that in, in what you're interested in? So it just depends on what aspect of your life you'd like to work and meet and play in. So it's not only for the practitioners, although it is for the practitioners, but it's also for the people that the practitioners work with and, and their patients and those patient groups to help people again, live it full out. I, th I think sometimes, um, and again, I think you, you raised the point that we all kind of have this set up to a certain extent, but we don't probably really have it set up as well as we'd like, right? That, that you know, in business, we have a board of directors and there's, a, there's probably some pretty diverse expertise there to help the business run properly. Well, this is a little bit of creating your own board of directors from a wellness side, coming together so that you can in fact live and play full out right. in, every, in everything we're doing. So how does it benefit, let's, let's start on the practitioner side. How does it benefit the practitioner as they become part of emergent wellness? A practitioner has specialties. Even a general practitioner is in the specialty of overviewing somebody's health. And if they see something uh, with a spine or, or uh, something with your foot or, or whatever it is, they tend to send you to a specialist. In our world, we look at the full dimensions of somebody. Uh, first of all, what we believe makes a difference. Uh, in the medical world, they'll call that a placebo effect. In the spiritual world, they'll talk about their walk with the creator or whatever that is that you have in your world. So you have a mindset, whether you're conscious or unconscious of that, of how you live your life. If you're unconscious of that, it's sort of like being on train tracks that have been predestined and you're just going to go right down those tracks. If you're conscious of it, you can create what it is that you're trying to do. So those practitioners may or may not fill the full roles that you want to have. So to answer your question, practitioners have the modalities that they like to serve in and they have a community. For example, if you're an eye doctor, you may see your patients once or twice a year. And if you're a dentist, you might see your patients once or twice a year. And many times the patient says, why can't I just make one phone call and have my well-being handled? Why can't I have a concierge and just say, set me up with so-and-so that takes my insurance or that's in my area or that region? So creating these communities for the providers so they get to do what they're good at. And we do the rest. We help with scheduling or finance or advisors or marketing or technology or whatever. So that practitioner gets to play with the modalities they work in and they get to educate the public, especially in arenas where the public says, I don't know what a thermography is, uh, what the heck is energy healing? Or I would rather get somebody that's uh, uh, regular MD and, and this kind of specialty. So, so where is a place where they can educate, learn, and, and learn from each other? Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. A lot of times from a coaching standpoint, I'll suggest that people stay inside their genius. You know, do the stuff that you're really good at and outsource the stuff that you're not, you know, and, and that sounds a little bit, you know, emergent wellness's role as well to, um, you know, let these practitioners do what they're really good at and let the other pieces kind of come together in a collaborative environment, which sounds very exciting, actually. It's exciting for everybody, especially the practitioners. I cannot tell you how many times I've had a doctor in tears or a nurse assistant or whatever and saying, the system, whatever that is, the people that I work for make me see so dang many appointments that I really can't get to the heart of my patient. And they can't afford what the people that I'm working with uh, to meet with me for a half an hour. And I can't get reimbursed that I only get five minutes with the insurance company. And they're saying, you know, for me just to see somebody and treat somebody under just the diagnosis codes that I'm allowed to do and just keep uh, giving you the same pills that you've already gotten or giving you new pills, I'm not really helping people get better. And it's in a crisis. I mean, people are leaving practice 
They're trying to do concierge, which is unaffordable by the people of, of lower income levels or, you know, so right now giving these practitioners an alternative for them to do what they love and spend more time doing that and still be able to survive is really a joy. I, I think it, it, again, it's, um, I love the fact that, that the, the process really promotes people to be able to live more fully to 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 express themselves and do it i um recently did a talk and and i talk about the acronym balance as all balance as the seven letters of the seven areas of life and sometimes we think that the that that we can achieve life balance but we really do a poor job of it what i suggest is that whenever we're in one of the areas play full out be a full 10 you know don't don't be a four in this and a six in that and a, and a nine in this. Be a 10 all the time, but be a focus 10. Be where your feet are, right? So in the collaboration of this wellness team, you now have as, a, as an individual or as a family, you now have the ability to reach out to, to people who are philosophically aligned with you, uh, you know, and working to play full out as well, correct? That's exactly right. You know, it's not only, you know, we're not born perfect, nor do I believe we hit perfection uh, in our life. Uh, and so what is it that we would like to do to live a full life? And in those seven areas that you talked about, it's unreasonable for us to think we're going to be an Olympic gymnast in every area of that life. It's what do we want to do in the next year? What is it that What's my well-being journey year one? And what is that for my family or uh, my friends or other types of things? This, sometimes we put ourselves in this little box in where we're at rather than looking for, well, what does my next year want to look like? We're in a very unique time now, especially since the COVID. People are learning, I can work from anywhere. If I'm working from home, that home could be anywhere. It could be in any community. Uh, so I, I now have a chance to co-create my life in ways that I never had before. So how do I create ahead before I just jump and move somewhere? How do I create a community? What kind of things do I want to do in the next few years of my life? How do I want to play? And so we have these events every once in a while. We'll have one in Sedona next May. And, talk about, well, what am I doing today? Who do I want to be by the time I arrive at that event? What is it that I want to do ahead of time? So as soon as somebody signs up for the event or somebody participates in the community, what is it that I'd like to play with first? We're not asking people to know everything and be perfect. Um, I know Scott, many times you say, it is important though for us to understand what it is that we want to facilitate so many marketing uh, platforms are, are designed to manipulate our thinking and who we want to be. But if we get the time to say, what is it that I want to do? And what if I'm creating the market of myself and where I want to go? What does that look like? Again, I, I think that's, that's really cool. I, I think that the time, you know, we're going through an unprecedented time for certain, uh, for sure. Uh, at an event not too long ago, I said by a show of hands, uh, everybody who built a, a worldwide pandemic into their business plan last year, raise your hand. Uh, nobody raised their hand, right? Uh, so we're going through a time where people have taken a look, finally, slowed down long enough, taken a look and said, you know what, being stuck on a car on a freeway, on a commute to work, just really isn't worth it. You know, and, and as you said, you can do business. Um, the entire world of business has changed in the last year, year and a half. And quite frankly, it'll never go back the same way. So there's such a great opportunity for emergent wellness to put these collaborative efforts together. And you're doing them kind of geographically and also, um, again, with clusters of, of practitioners, correct? That's correct. So, you know, some people like a chiropractor or an eye doctor you want to see personally. And then others, uh, whether it's a 
somebody that uh, even a therapist, a lot of people are practicing remotely now and the people actually appreciate not having to drive to the office. So in regions like St. Louis and Phoenix and Dallas, uh, uh, there's several that we're really looking at creating a tribe. And if it's a collection of providers that want to work together and serve together and collaborate, we really want to help them build that. Um, and practically speaking, you know, we're not trying to say we're fixing everything or even needing to do that all at once. Most people don't need to be fixed. Most people just need to look at what is it that I want to do next? Uh, and what do I need to do proactively to not get into a chronic condition? Uh, it looks like half of our medical spend in a year is on uh, 20 chronic conditions that did not need to get to a chronic condition in the first place. So who are we being and how are we living to be at, uh, you know, in a, in a healthy state and who do people work with? So we are working regionally and we're also working with uh, people who national platforms to do things. So we're doing things practically, you know, is there things that I can do to afford healthcare on the healthcare side? Uh, are there things that I can do to, you know, who do I trust financially and in, in what I need to do? If you're a business and you want to sell your business someday, the time is not to think about it a year before you do it. The time is to look at who your apprentices are and what you're doing a decade or more ahead of time. So legacy, same thing for an individual. It's, it's, it's not just looking at paycheck to paycheck, what does my future look like and what are practical steps I can take today to enjoy things? So helping people understand, okay, I, I wanna have a nice life today. I want to have these seasons in my life where I, I get to do fun things at, at different times. And then I wanna have something for retirement. You know, How do people look at the different arenas of their life and how that life well lived looks? Well, I think the other side of it that, that's so fascinating is it's not really about becoming the expert yourself in all these categories, but it's becoming an informed consumer. It's becoming uh, somebody who, who knows a, a vetted, trusted resource like Emergent Wellness to, to come to the platform to know that these practitioners, the, the people who are on the platform, are there to be of service because they've they've come together to to collaborate. They they see a better way, and and if you can if you can do it better, do it better, right? Most people, if they have a framework, want to do good by other people. Uh, unfortunately, we grew up playing Monopoly in our life, so we grew up in these patriarchal, fear-based models where one player wins, but in actuality. Uh, we're not meant to be isolated and separate. I mean, we make sure that people are following the rules on the road so we can get from point A to point B without getting killed, right? We already trust, even though we're unconscious of trusting that that person coming at me is gonna stay in their lane. So we have our own ecosystems and our own niches and things that we want to do and where we want to go to achieve that. So having people be aware of who those people are and those trusted members, so everybody has them, you know, what is it that we want to be able to do in a community and what do we want to build in our own community? Uh, and if we do give the structure for people to be able to serve and collaborate, they will. They just, we're not taught to think that way. We're taught to compete. We're not taught to think Oh, 20 people working together to build a website, it's a lot cheaper for them than somebody doing that all by themselves. Or somebody who wants to lose weight, it's a lot easier if you're with a group of people and you're going out and hiking and laughing together than it is to sit in home and stare at the cupboard and say, well, I really want to eat that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. As a guy who's gained and lost a few pounds in his life, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> totally understand that. Situation. I, I just love the collaborative aspect of, of everybody coming together and wanting um, for the betterment of all, and, and especially our wellness, because um, they, they had done a show um, last week with a gentleman, 20% of our GNP is healthcare spend, is, is medical, is, it's not really healthcare, it's really sick care spend. And 
and what could we do if we were able to number one reduce that but number two live a higher quality of life right isn't that what it's all about it's really about quality of life that's perfect uh, you know you can be fit and be completely unhappy right you, you can be fit in your relationships in your life you're uh, this is unfair to say if, if you're all this all the time looking in a mirror and just working on yourself and you're ignoring the people around you they're probably not happy and you're probably not happy so it's it's what is it that you're doing not only with yourself but the community and you're right we've focused on what happens when something's wrong uh and we in, in the sick care or if you already have a symptom we're not looking at oh what's what's right and what would i like to have better you know what what is it that i want to look at holy we're really good at our strengths uh, so if we get to concentrate on what we're good at and we get to complement ourselves with people who are good at things that we're not necessarily good at and we're doing that together all of a sudden your life is a, a lot more meaningful and what you're able to do and your reach is, is a lot longer whether you're a consumer or a practitioner or an advisor. It, again, makes so much sense. It, it really ties into a fairly significant portion of my last book of, of this balance acronym and just being able to live full out. I, I have not done it well myself. Uh, and um, a lot of people that I know have not done it well either. You know, we've been... Um, high achievers in certain areas and certain arenas, but that's taken a toll from the overall balance and uh, overall quality of life uh, in being able to participate. So this is such a, um, I love the, the focus of emergent wellness on living a higher quality of life. Well, you know, to embarrass you just a little bit, uh, the tremendous work that you've done in bringing people to motivational speakers, the network that you have, the difference that you made in people's lives, that's enormous, Scott. I mean, who you are is incredible in those sectors. Then you have the other sectors that you say, you know, I would really like help in these ways. And so for people to come together as a family and say, Hey, Scott, because the, the last, I'm a tech geek. I mean, it, you're very nice to put on this show with me and I hope I'm saying the right things and talking to people, but technology is what I've built for years and years and years. And, and so you help me reach people that I don't necessarily do. And so for other people who want help with technology or business advice or something like that, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. So creating a team of nurturing people that, that help us together it makes the the losses a little more bearable while we're trying to shore up that side. Uh, and you know who you are as a gift with what you're doing right now and helping people. That's tremendous. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. you are as well. And and I think that that's the. It comes back to staying in your genius and or um, you know utilizing your gifting and realizing. Um, I, I don't know why it just flashed in my head. Multitasking just flashed in my head, which is such a uh, number one. It's an oxymoron. Number two, it doesn't <laughs> really work. Uh, and and all of a sudden, um, like I say, I think that that we've been taught that we can do forty-seven different things, and and the chances are we're pretty adaptive. We can, we probably can. The question is, do we do them well? <laughs> You know, and, and why not let those who are gifted in certain things do those certain things? And But I love the aspect of the collaborative effort then to coming together and, and saying, well, together we can lift all. And, and if we lift all and we do more of that, that even expands further to a potential tipping point on the planet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kids love hanging out with other kids. So three or four families doing a barbecue together makes an ordinary day really special. Uh, there's just so many things that we can do collaboratively, whether it's um, the mundane to really making a difference uh, politically or business-wise or whatever. It's what, what communities do we wanna create 
that are effective in our lives and, and letting the person, the person who should be choosing their life is the person themselves. It shouldn't be whatever company that's in the news or advertising you or trying to manipulate you into buying this type of thing or that type of thing. You know, how do we make ourselves the center of our own ecosystem? And the people in our ecosystem, they usually want us to be more successful. So helping people understand the ecosystem they're in, if that doesn't serve them, what ecosystem should they go in, in the different arenas of their life. Yeah, it, it just, um, again, I, I, I have always appreciated that, that collaborative spirit, uh, you know, of um, people working together at it. I said one time to a friend, can't we just all get along? And he goes, nope, we're not built that way. And I went, that's a terrible answer. My God, right? Well, what if we could go more than get along, but really prosper, right? Really work to lift each other to prosper. You know, almost every faith-based system or even agnostic or even just pure thinkers have some kind of a golden rule. If you would just treat each other uh, to the best of your ability, uh, we tend to apply that in certain areas and ignore it in others. But if we did that, it would change the world overnight. So what is it about us human beings that we don't do that? And who do we need to be that it's safer to do that in the world of trust and what we want to co-create? And now, so now I'm waning in philosophical, but uh, you know, where is it that people want to go next in their journey? Uh, not just looking at when something goes wrong, but looking at what is it that I want to co-create while I'm healthy and while I'm well. Again, I think, um, you know, what just popped into my head was we, we become the sum total of our five closest friends or associations or things like that. Well, what a, what a great concept to have some, a place like emergent wellness where people are purposefully coming together to, to play at a higher level, to, to play more full out, and then understand that these, these wellness teams or these, these uh, collaborations are really people with intentionality that you want to that now you're in that kind of community where you can be a, a near five really cooler people. And you're not, not from a um, just coolness standpoint, but from a purposeful, from a collaborative, from a, um, from a, a heartfelt desire. Really it, it's, it's heart, uh, like hearted, like minded people, correct? It really is. And it's amazingly easy uh, for people to get to meet mentors or other people in their aspect, uh, especially today between Twitters and everything going on. So once you look at who are those five people and who could they be, uh, most people that have been successful like to share that joy. They like to work with people and they like to be protected. So you know, we have um, in emergent wellness, we have communities that are private communities. You can even make them hidden for people. You just want to make your own peer group uh, so you don't get blasted by sales or whatever that every day. Or you can make them public and say, really, I want to know more about essential oils than I ever could in my life. And, and uh, you know, how, how does that work or whatever it is that, you know, going fishing, you know, and I'd like to hang out with a group of people and go fishing that's all well-being yeah that that's awesome uh man hard to believe that we've we've run through our time already how do people get a hold of you or get a hold of emergent wellness and start to partake participate they Play just the go to, yep just go to the emergentwellness.com website that is just a website it has uh, uh things about different events we have coming up and a directory but there's a contact form. And if you want to be part of a community, so you wanna find people in your area or your interest groups, fill that form out. You can go see for free the community. You can see what teams are there. And, and if you wanna build something, we'll 
help you build your own community and your own region. If you're a practitioner or an individual or an advisor, we'll take them all. So emergentwellness.com, Correct. place to go. Tim, thanks for being here today. I really look forward to, we're going to have to have another show and talk even further, spread more of the good. Or some people more interesting for me than me, uh, Emergent Wellness. Oh, no. But yeah, thank I mean, you very much. Awesome. Uh, thank you for joining us all here for Scott Schilling Speaks. We'll see you again tomorrow, exact same time. God bless.